the United States of America, and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, liberty and justice for all. Uh, it's Roy. Uh, I'm here okay. uh, I think we're still good though, right? Yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah. All right, wonderful. Uh, if everyone had a chance to review the minutes, I'll look for a motion to approve. Motion to halt. Do I have a second? All done. Okay, thank you, sir. All right. Any discussion? Not all in favor? Any opposed? Let's jump on to the resolutions of the day. Uh, first, we're looking at is the first one appointing members to the Oswego County Soil and Water Conservation District Board of Directors. And that, is that just reappointments or is that a new one? It's a new one. I think I'm going on there. Yeah. All right. So let's look for a motion. Do I have a motion? Do I have a motion? Is there any motion? <clears throat> Oh All right, thank you, sir. <laughs> Do I have a second? I didn't think I should. So. <laughs> Looking for a second. I'll second. Yes. Thank you, Ed. <laughs> All right, any discussion about the slate of uh, appointees, which I think is. Um, uh, legislator Terry Wilbur, oh, is he going Legislator Linda okay. Lockwood, and Jeffrey Richards. Oh. Okay. All right. Thank All you, sir. Okay. No, I thought you were going on. I, I did too. It, it says, it has, this is what it's saying, though. Right? Yeah. Terry Wilbur, yeah. Linda Lockwood, and I thought you were going on. I want to have to Terry. Yeah, because I know he talked so to me that I was supposed to. No, but this has to be held. This yeah. one has okay. to be held. Okay. Marie. Question, two part question. Go ahead. This includes EP1 and EP3. We asked a year ago if any are any Democrats ever going to be asked, contacted, or made aware of any appointment. And when that was asked, and my understanding is that we the, would get back to you. Oh, I, I was told that the um, affiliation is not the important piece; it is the skill set of those who are appointed. Of course, um, it is. <laughs> whether or not the two folks that are listed here are both the uh, majority leader and vice chair of the legislature. Um, but I, I did think, Mel, weren't you on this? I, just, I, I thought you were in the middle packet. Phil, do you happen to yeah. know about that? Do you want to hold off on this one? Or? Well, actually, I think, if I'm not mistaken, uh, it's the Farmland Conservation uh, Board, not Water and Soil. That's there the was one. two of them. Oh, there was yeah. two. Okay. Oh, there's there's two. okay. Um, let's do this. Let's let's hold off on this one. If I could, we'll table this for a second, and we'll verify that. So yeah. we can double check that quick, Phil. Or I thought Mel was on this one, too. Oh, what, EP3? Uh, EP1. EP1. Because the names listed here are Terry, but I thought Terry Because I thought Terry was coming off. Right. Coming off and he, yeah. All right, let's do this. Let's table one and we'll jump to two. Um, I do know we were looking for you. Can I ask if you're an amendment on the floor? Okay. Either or. Okay. You have a week to now or figure out what's going on rather than trying to try to come back and then we amend that and Terry. Okay. And then yeah, I thought that was too. I'm just confused why it's not here right now. Oh, that was yeah. yeah, and I would, I mean, I'd rather not fix this Harry. and then fix it. Let's let's fix it. Although, then we'd have to do a special meeting of the of our uh, development committee, right? In order no. to recommend it. Well, if you amend it here, yeah. no, it just goes to the floor. Right now. All right. Is there anybody who can verify this? Is Chris going to check with Chris? Or? <clears throat> I, thought, I thought the packet I had had that. Yeah. No, it's maybe it's just got Chairman. it. Yes, sir. Um, I have requested. Uh, special meeting of EDP prior to the legislative meeting. Oh, okay. So, I didn't with it. yeah. Okay. okay. All right. To reward the bid for the sewer line. That's correct. Okay. So, okay. so let's do this then. Let's table it until the end of the meeting. If we don't have an answer, we will do okay. this at that meeting. Is that okay with it? I'd rather I not pass this. Go to the floor. No, I, personally, I feel uncomfortable voting on something here as a group that I don't believe is accurate. It's just a like, I'd rather have it correct and then vote on it. But I mean, if the arrow is temporal, we can we can do that. It's totally up to all of you. And there's our committee, so I just like to be correct. <laughs> well, I think there's three of us who think it's accurate. Okay. Yeah. All right. So you you want to make a motion I, to I remove Terry? Okay. Do we have a second to add motion? We have a second. Mm -hmm. All right. Any discussion about that motion? Yeah. Amendment. That is to remove just Terry. To remove Terry and yeah. place Mel instead is the motion. Chris is fine. Go ahead. He's okay. Going. He's going to come back in with an answer, so we just want to skip it and circle back to it. We could hold off on the vote. 
All right. Well, then we have a we have an amendment motion, so we need to table that, correct? So we can jump on the res resolution too. Is that correct? So we'll join the motion table. Sorry, we should have called Richard today. I apologize, guys. Um, yeah, you can motion to, to table it until it should say that the table of motion should say that you're waiting additional information in this meeting. Okay. So that there's no confusion at this table until another time. Okay. So we, we do have an amendment motion on the table that has been seconded. Mm -hmm. so we're in the discussion point of that amended motion. Mm -hmm. Do we want to Someone could vote. make a motion to table the resolution until additional information comes in. It doesn't have to table the amendment or anything. Just okay. table the re resolution. I can't wait. Yes, we got our rules. This is kind of like yes. So resolution amending bylaws. Never mind. As it's written. Isn't Terry? Isn't going to go on. You're going to stay on for this last year and be transitioned to afterwards. That was a change. That's okay. It's fine with me. All right. If we need to fix it on the floor, we'll fix it. Would you be willing to? Are we no longer tabling? No. I think we're going to. I think we're going to go back to the original resolution. <laughs> Apologize, everyone. So wow. let's do this. If you'd be willing, so would you withdraw your back? Yeah, I know. Let's I, I, I apologize. I apologize because that was my understanding. I apologize. I was doing a good vote. I was doing a good vote. But I, you know, I'll, I'll, uh, I'll make a motion to table the resolution. Okay. My motion to, to amend. amend the resolution. Okay. I have to do is withdraw. I would draw it. Okay. <laughs> this is a awesome little thing about the rules. All right, let's do this then. We don't um, go by Robert's rules. Any further discussion to the resolution appointing the three no. members that are noted in the resolution? If not, I'll look for a vote. All in favor? All right. Any opposed? All right, that carries. Thanks, guys. That was fun. All right. <laughs> let's go to EP2. Resolution amending the bylaws to the Studio County Environmental Management Council. My understanding is this is correct, and we can. Uh, we can move forward to this. I look the motion. I have one. Thank you, Mel. Do we have a second? Oh, thank you, sir. Any discussion? <coughs> All in favor? Aye. Any opposed? Thank you, everyone. All right, great. Uh, resolution appointing individuals to Oswego County Environmental Management Council. You see the list there. That is, I believe, is that reappointments with one new? No, I think this is a full reappointment, correct? Are you familiar with this one? Because this is all reappointment. There are no, they're not all reappointments. Okay. Oh, let, uh, let's say Lori Mangano is coming on, correct? Mm -hmm. She's new. Okay. Any other discussion on this list? Legislator Pat Quist, Peter <coughs> Rosenbaum, Legislator Lori Mangano, Sandy Preport, Hal Smith, Jesse McMakin, and Holly Carpenter. Isn't that Rosenbaum, Peter? Yes, Peter Rosenbaum. Good. All right. Okay. Do I have a motion? I don't think I have one yet, do I? No, man. I'm thrown back. I'm sorry. You, I got you. I got you. Time motion. <laughs> okay. <I don't> know. <laughs> <laughs> we might need to. We have a lot of here today. So do I have a motion? One motion. Paul, oh, thank you. Second. Oh, all in favor. I'm sorry. Any discussion? All in favor. Aye. 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 Any opposed? All right. Thank you, guys. Okay. EP4, resolution fixing time and place for public hearing relative to requests of landowner inclusion within our existing certified agricultural districts. Uh, this is our annual time and place for anyone who's interested in become, to put their name in and become a member of this list. It gives you the ability to write to farm, I believe is my understanding. Mm -hmm. um, and it is open to anyone who would be willing to apply. Yeah. Uh, right. A motion? I'll make a motion. Thank you. Do I have a second? No, thank you. Comments. Can you, I did a little research. Huey County has to at least profit 10000 on the property included in one of these districts what are our requirements so if i can there's there's two different um uh, inclusions in the district one you simply have to have uh, land that can be used uh, productively for agricultural purposes that's what this is so if you have a woodlot that you uh, tend and harvest if you have a field that you rent to a neighboring farmer for production, anything agricultural based that, that can happen there, you can have your land classified as being within the ag district. If you want 
the tax exemptions that go with that, then you have to meet that $10,000 threshold in order to qualify as being significantly involved in agriculture uh, in order to get the tax benefit from it. So what durable documents? You give a W-2 and prove that you... Yeah, there's a whole report that um, is done between soil and water, real property, um, cooperative extension, and it lists the acreage, it shows the, the parcel, it talks about what crops they have or if they're raising animals, what uh, types of animals, and then dollar amounts associated with that. Is and that something we can find on the nearly impossible to navigate website? The Ag District? Uh, should we be under the list planning department. People, yeah. the amount, mm -hmm. how much, how much of a tax um, break they're getting. Where do we get that document? So Chris uh, should have a list of everybody. We Chris have Jones. Chris Jones. We can make you a map that shows where they all are. I'd like a list. Okay. Um, Lots. Yeah. Uh, one, one town, uh, Oswego. Town. Uh, they're asking for a copy of Schedule F that started last year to prove they managed the farm income coming in. And the discount, I didn't get my paperwork in on time two years ago. So uh, instead of paying 15000 I mean 14000 I paid 15000 So it's about $1,000 saving overall. On every parcel? Well, I, I, I've got like 100 acres over there. So I mean, that's, that's so I, I don't know the exact percentage that people get and on the discount. You know, it, it varies by. The type of land you have actually has something to do with how much corn you can grow up on your land. That's how they they rate it. It's ridiculous. But that's well, it's not just corn. So, well, no, that's how they set the that's how they set the price though of the value of the land is by what corn you can grow on it. Hmm. Yeah, I know it's crazy. Mm -hmm. Yeah, it's um, just a couple things because I'm involved with that. And first of all, the values are established by the soil types you have. Right. That's why you have to get your paperwork with soil and water. And it has to be done when you first take a piece of property and it's put it into this, we're trying to get into the ag district. Soil and water fills out your paperwork. It's got to be in by, I believe, the 31st, uh, which is too late now for anybody who wanted to get into it. And then they come up with your, what your assessment will be taken out of it. And it's based on every seven years, because I fell into this, you should have also, about had to be four or five years ago, and the corn was way down, your assessment for it, for what you have deducted, went way down. Um, it, it's And that's crazy, but that's how it's based. It's based on the price per corn and how much corn on average can be grown on your soil type. That, that's how that works. Yeah, that's the way I know I had something to do with corn. You're right. You Who know, pays the burden of the soil testing? They don't test the soil like that. Soil and water already has. We have soil maps. Go ahead. They have soil maps. These have been established, Maria, a long time ago. The soil's not going to change. It is what it is. It just gets worse with a chemical load. Okay. That was a good conversation. Anybody else? Do you have any more? You good? No, I'm good. So you should know that. To be to get the tax exemption, they don't have to go before the Farmland Protection Board. But to be included in this process, they do. So anybody who applies gets vetted by the Farmland Protection Board before it comes to the legislature. What is the advantage then of being in this district versus? So, for example, um, if somebody is going to run a water line down your road, um, instead of being um, assessed for your share of that based on your frontage. You'd have one charge um, as an agricultural property instead of per foot like other people. Um, somebody wants to build a house across the street and complain that they don't like the odors from your farm and they think you should stop farming. You have a protection to continue your right to farm. Um, there's different things like that that just give you some peace of mind as a agricultural producer that you'll be able to continue to do what what you have always intended to do. Is there an acre size limit? No. No. It's basically a right to farm because what it is, that's the main thing is the right to farm. I don't think you put the acre limit on that. Mm. I don't I don't think, think so, so. no. 
it would be nice down. to know. Yeah. yeah, no, there's no there's no limit. So you could do it with one acre. Yeah, they have some greenhouses and stuff that are in a small acre that they would like to do so. Half is forty thousand dollars an acre. So, just saying. <laughs> <laughs> but this has nothing to do with you can you don't need to be in an ag district to get an ag exemption right yeah uh, Richard yes I just to follow up with what was being said and I'm sorry I'm not trying to take over your meeting I just happen to be you're hitting a strong point that I know about that deal in agriculture that's a good conversation and the thing is this if, for example if your town out there puts in a new water district. I'm just using that as an example. And that line runs along somebody's property that's under an egg district. It's not based on per foot, but along that line of that property line, there's, if you choose, say you don't want to hook up to the water line, you have a residential, you don't, you have to pay half what they call an EDU for payment on that water line. Agricultural, because I've got one of my constituents, it's a pain in the ass, but very bluntly, but I can't talk him into it. He's got more money than God. He doesn't, he, he opts out of it. And when he opts out of that, he doesn't have to pay me to you or anything. <coughs> That's the way that works. Now, you just got our YouTube video rated PG 13. I want you to know that. I don't care. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Thank you, Richard. Uh, any further discussion? And then there's one final thing that um, there's certain things that qualify different uh, parcels for review by the county planning board or planning office. Um, and there, if you're on a county road, a state road, a waterway, historic sites, ag districts is another one. So if somebody wants to do something in the town um, and it happens to be within 500 feet of a property that's in an ag district, we get an extra look at it before they can approve whatever is being proposed for that site. So it provides some protection for the property and the neighborhoods. Okay, thanks, David. Wait, if no further discussion, I'll look for a vote all in favor. Aye. Aye. Any opposed? Okay, thank you. Number five, looking for a budget modification for the Community Development Tourism and Tourism and Planning for the Oswego River Access Project. Please go ahead. Yeah, so we had this uh, project funded uh, partially by a grant from the uh, Department of State. Uh, there was an opportunity to get a little bit of extra money from um, the Erie Canal and National Heritage Corridor. We made the application. It's not a lot. It's $12,000. Um, and we can match um, our other grant against this one, so there's no cost to the county. Just gives us a little bit more in that project to minimize the actual expense to the county. Right now, it's our intent that in kind services from the highway department will be our local match. So we just add, add a little money to the project. It's better than the other alternative, right? Right. Okay. Um, do I have a motion? Thank you, Matt. Looking for a second. second. Paul, thank you. All right. Any discussion on what David mentioned? I just, I just want to say um, I'm opposed to the project. We hijacked 14,000 feet of waterfront by using a county building that won't give us any taxes on crying riverfront. And now I try to access it. Good luck. But I just feel if this was a business plan, it gets an F, the whole thing. Mm -hmm. So thank you for your time. Thanks, Mary. All right. Uh, and just a little bit further, I think we talked about a couple times in our meetings. This is the project that would allow for the accessible um, kayak launch uh, in that section of the river. It is very difficult. Kind of an Indiana currently. Jones entry. It is. It is. <laughs> yeah. It's definitely. Giant, giant just, rolling yeah. rock behind you. Um, yeah. <laughs> the, this project will allow for an access. Uh, it will help to create that. And this is a section of the river being a kayak for myself that I'm looking forward to having better access to. But I think Lori's point is well taken. So. Uh, any further discussion? Yeah. Is there a better site that you could put where you don't have to go outside the steep area to get to the river? Is there another area that could well, be? Well, not the wrong. Yeah, okay. that's, that's part of the effort here. And then we do. We did receive a grant through uh, the Department of State, uh, their local waterfront, to, to to perform the project to give access there. And we've got a decent group of folks who've been meeting to discuss the project, and um, it seems like there are a number who are, are pretty excited about having access down there. 
Um, and I know there were other sites like that, but that seemed to be the... The whole corridor between Block 6 and Block 5 is pretty steep banks all the way down. Most yeah. of it's privately owned, and this was one that we happened to own already. There's a bit of a natural swell action, yeah. kind of does. I mean, you could walk it. You might want a cane or some sort of supporting. <laughs> but the, the point would be that this will help give that access to the project. So. And there is a public meeting March 5th uh, in this building, 6 to 9 p.m. So anybody that's interested in seeing the proposals or make the comments. So we'll, we'll post that on the website and hopefully share that around. Marie, go ahead. Last question. How much out of pocket does this cost us? Uh, currently, it's not going right now. It's not anything. planned for any ca cash out of pocket. So it'll be Just no cash ever out of our pocket. In kind services from Highway, so they're going to um, pave that parking lot that's there, kind of, sort of, kind of right now. That little turnaround. Um, that's that pile of uh, shavings that's there is from a uh, state job. So we use that as some of the base layer, and then highway will come in and use their equipment and then to uh, put the parking lot in. How many parking spots? Uh, we're not really sure yet, but there's uh, going to be probably around 18. Depends on if we build more or less with space for trailers. Typically, you know, this is meant for car top boats, but some people do have these little trailers that they tow behind for goodies and kayaks. So. We might add a couple of those. Some of that's going to be through the public comment process to see what folks feel about that. Ed, do you want to say yeah, it's just kind of it's a summary of the, of the timeline to date with what's happened, what, what, how much that other, I, I can't recall how much that other thing was. So the first one is. Um, 206,103 from the county and 103 from the state. And uh, like in kind, mostly highway, but also time for my staff and myself who have uh, been putting it together over the last couple of years. And hopefully it will all be in kind from the county. So then our cost going forward will just be to maintain this. Sure. Yeah. Uh, okay, any further discussion? Not. I look for a vote. All in favor? Aye. 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 Any opposed? One opposed? Thank you. Okay, <coughs> case. let's um, jump on to the last resolution today. The resolution increasing the authorization for capital project number 94, asset replacement. Dave, you want to tell us what that means? Yep. Um, so this is um, capital project 94. Um, it's improvements to our uh, transportation system that's uh, managed by Swing County Opportunities and includes a lot of things uh, under that capital project. This is an addition to it that will allow them to uh, retire a bus and replace it with a new one. <coughs> no county cost. All right, look for motion. Second. No, all right. Thanks, Will. Great work. I guess so. Any discussion about this project? All in favor? Aye. 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 Any opposed? Perfect, thank you. All right, let's jump into our Ag and Farmland Protection Board appointment. Why do we need a resolution for the one appointment? But we don't for this one. It's a story there. It's just the way it's set up, though. And I, I need to hold this, too. This is the one that I need to hold because, <coughs> once again, I was supposed to, and, and I think this one even mentions me getting on here, and I don't know if I can because of I'm not going to be here. Okay. When they need this chairman. All right. Do we know if this is time sensitive? Yes. That's the whole thing with Chris. Was like uh, you really need to have it before. So if we can hold it to the special meeting uh, before the ledge, okay. I'd like to table it to then. Well, it's not a resolution. Or it's so not a resolution. we just okay. well, how do we do that? We need. If it's we not, need it's it, it's not we'll a resolution. Then it's a recommendation of this committee and the chairman. If we need to put it on the agenda for that special meeting, we'll do it. Okay, that's perfect. Everybody sound okay with that? Great. Well, then that was easy. Yeah. Let's, uh, yeah. let's jump to our so we don't, need, we don't need to table it. We just yeah, just I mean, it's, just, it's set up for informational pieces, so I don't think we need to do anything. All right, let's go to. Well, the chairman does 
rely on a recommendation yeah. from this committee mm -hmm. for those members. Does that need to be formally done then by resolution or no? No. no. All right. All right. Well, we have, we have a list that you concur. Yeah, because I thought this was the one that Terry was going to go for another year and not the other one. That's why I'm confused. I was like, mm -hmm. Terry said, I guess I have to be chairman for another year. Poor guy. All right, let's. Uh, <laughs> I'll put, I'm going to take, well, I'm take a motion to table this. No? Do we have a second? Second. Oh, on the first. Both. I'm sorry, I'm sorry, I'm sorry. <laughs> oh, thank you, Sarah. Any discussion? All in favor of table this motion? Aye. Aye. Any opposed? Okay, thank you. All right, great. Let's get some updates. Uh, Dave, we are looking for an update on our housing. Sure. So um, we don't talk about housing uh, office very often. There's four people there. They manage 454 uh, contracts. We are um, a partner with New York State Office of Housing and Community Renewal. They have a contract with the federal government to administer uh, certain vouchers across New York State. Uh, we've had this contract for way longer than I've been here, uh, 20 to 30 years. Um, so, questions uh, or our uh, intent is to uh, manage um, customers who are outside the two cities. But uh, the fact is that once a person has one of these housing vouchers, they can pretty much uh, choose uh, where they'd like to locate. And as long as that, um, that property meets the minimum guidelines for uh, safety, uh, pretty much can't say someone who wants to be in our program, you are prohibited from living in the city. If they choose the city, then, um, they do. But um, as I said, we have 454 contracts. 40% uh, of those are seniors, 55% are families, and 5% are individuals. Um, of the uh, 454, 55.5% over the whole group uh, are disabled as well. So, um, as you might guess, uh, given the densities of the population, uh, about 15% is uh, <coughs> in the city of Oswego, almost 18% in the city of Fulton, um, and then we go to Richland. Town of Richland has just under 11%. Hastings has just under 12%. Next one would be Scriba with about seven and a half, and Granby with about four and a half, all, or Mexico with five. All the rest are, uh, Mineta with six. All the rest are around one, two, or less than one percent. So um, we have an inspector that uh, travels the county on a regular basis to annually take a look at all those properties. And, um, Folks are required to come in regularly for the certification. They have to meet the regular guidelines. Yeah, that, that the guidelines you're speaking of, those are um, required and administered, or I'm sorry, they're required by the state, correct? They are federal guidelines that are passed through their contract to the state and then down to us. So in order for us to change those, the state has to concur, and then the state has to get approval from the feds. So one, one, uh, thing that we have done that we've had flexibility to do is uh, we instituted a, a rule that uh, if the community has uh, rental permits, then um, you have to choose a house that has a approved rental permit in that community. So we, we can't get into um, code inspections, that's the municipality's responsibility. But if they have a higher standard through their permit process, um, we can move uh, to that. And we have done that in the two cities where there are permits. Okay. okay. Uh, does anybody have any questions? This is exciting. Uh, we have not had this uh, report like this. It is available. I want to make sure everybody understands uh, if anybody's interested in discussing this, Dave, and uh, folks in that office um, do a great job. And, uh, but it is, it is technically under this committee, and I wanted to bring forward some information on that. 
and you probably have not heard much about the, uh, the voucher program that the county operates. Also, there is a city operated in Fulton uh, in 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 City, right? And one in Fulton as well. And they kind of run concurrently, overlapping a bit, but could not. Uh, the administrative side of it is completely separate for each of them. And, and we all have <clears throat> we all have a limited number of vouchers um, that we administer. So if somebody came in today and said, uh, "I'd like to." Get some housing assistance. They go on a waiting list that can be as long as sometimes a year to two years, depending on how many people are there. The city's lists are around the same. Um, what you can't control is if somebody in Phoenix, Arizona qualifies for a housing voucher. Once they get that, no matter where they are in the country, they can take that with them to some other place. So sometimes you absorb people, um, but you can't. Uh, we're not free to just give them out to anybody that comes in. We have a specific amount that we're allocating. And they're required to be residents of the county, is that correct, uh, in order to apply for a new one? Uh, no, you could come from Anchorage and say, I'd like to live in Oswego County, and can I get housing uh, assistance? Right, but they would need yeah. to live here. Is it? Oh, yeah. Yeah, that's right. Uh, that's a good question. Are residency requirements something we could implement? Could it be required? I think it can be. Well, um, you wouldn't be on our program if you didn't choose to reside here, but you don't have to be a resident to apply. <clears throat> if you're accepted and issued a voucher and you go on our program, you would start your residency here, but that doesn't prohibit them from then moving someplace else. They take it with them? Yes. Um, Champlain Commons, I'm told by so many people, and it's not in my district, you know, there's been a shooting. It was kept fairly quiet. Helicopter chase, cars are getting broken into. The general character of the neighborhood is starting to come to their knees over it, and the residents are enraged, as I'm sure everybody knows. Um, I just feel it's one of these situations build it and they will come. And um, I feel we're attracting this. So that's not <clears throat> anything that we're involved in. Um, if somebody who has a housing voucher um, wanted to reside there and they had a vacancy, they could do that just like they could reside in the house across the street from here if that met the minimum standards. Does Champlain Commons have a pilot? They do not. I don't know that. No, they do not. No pilot? And they would be subject to the $150 per unit. Because they're in the they're in the city. Or no, they're in Scarborough. Right. Scarborough. Yeah. But like Hamilton Farms would be per unit, correct? There's no breaks given. Yeah, it's 150. I'm sorry. It's 150 a unit for your re built, um, rental permit. Oh, oh, in the city of Oswego. Yeah. Correct. Correct. Uh, I don't know if there's a. I apologize. I don't know if they have a reduction for you know if, you, if you've got 10, do you you know. Or 11 to 3, I'm not quite sure how they do that. That seems like selective enforcement if they. I don't know the answer to that, though, so that would be a good question, but that's more of a city question. But no, Scribe does not have any requirements, any rental permits, uh, really no zoning either. So. Well, they have code enforcement. They have the New York State Building Code that they're obligated to enforce, but they don't have zoning. They have site plan review for projects. And they have subdivision regulations, but they don't have zoning, so to speak. Yeah. Right, any other questions about the rental program? Oh. If they take that voucher yeah. and mm -hmm. leave the state to go to another state, does that short side us here in Sora County for vouchers for more people? No. Um, so we only can issue uh, the amount that we've been allocated. So in order for us to have uh, a voucher to give to somebody else, somebody would have to vacate uh, their voucher for um, violations of their contract or um, they would have to pa pass away and, and then their voucher becomes available. So there's different things that uh, you're required um, to certify to, like the number of people in your household, how many people are working, what's your income, um, if you have a guest. Um, they can stay for certain periods of time, like you can have your aunt come and live with you for a couple of weeks, but you can't have your boyfriend move in who has a job and not report that as another person. So 
if you violate your contract, then we're going to take that away from you. That would free one up for a new person. Um, but that doesn't mean that that new person couldn't then move to Liverpool. Uh, um, when Oswego and Fulton kind of raised the bar, did they see fewer permits being used? Um, I don't, permits, but you know. Yeah, I would have to talk to their housing managers. I, I don't know the history of that. It's a question. Yeah. My understanding is they still put the waiting list, so I, I don't think yeah. that their no. utilization, utilization has changed. Okay. Right. Right. It's needed. It looks like they're still there. Um, any other questions? All right. Dave, thank you. That was excellent. Um, and again, if anyone has any questions down the road, Dave is uh, very available as well as their. <coughs> the gentleman who runs the housing department? Scott Smith. Scott Smith. It's right downstairs, right down this stairwell. Uh, awesome, that was great. Uh, do you have any other department updates? Uh, just a couple of quick things. We had a nice uh, post by the state of New York for the Children's Museum of Oswego. Um, they did, uh, they do a blog every two weeks. This one happened to be discover the best family friendly indoor activities in New York. And they included the Children's Museum also on that list, so understand um, the quality of the places that they were promoting were Broadway, we'll see a play, uh, Baseball Hall of Fame, and The Wild in uh, Tupper Lake. If you've never been there, that's really a nice uh, presentation of the Adirondack. So some high-end places that were on that recommendation list and Children's Museum was included. So that was nice. Um, so the Lieutenant Governor says it's one of the favorite places in the state. Really? Two other things uh, quickly. We just did, this was a joint partnership with the city of Oswego to help them promote uh, things to see and do in and around the city and to also uh, promote specifically on the flip side their marinas. So we worked with their tourism board to uh, put that together and uh, they're quite pleased with it. They're giving it to uh, charter captains and other people to distribute at various shows and doing their own uh, other distribution as well. And this was also, this is the first time for this uh, magazine, this was a partnership with uh, Tug Hill and the various counties included in there. And you'll find uh, beginning on page 28, what they call the core forest region. Um, that's the, the Swiggle County section. There's a page on Altmar, Parish, Pulaski, and a nice trail map in there that shows uh, trails throughout the uh, regions, Redfield and Sandy Creek. So, Where's the Swigo? Swigo is not in the Tug Hill region. So that was a uh, about a year long project and uh, came together nicely. Another par partnership. So. Great, thanks, Dave. Um, all right, well, then we will jump on. Is it anybody have any questions for Dave? Or is anything? All right, gentlemen, why don't you step up here? Actually, I apologize. I did not. We, this is our first meeting of the year. We do have a, a new, a couple new legislators here. Uh, on legislator here. So let me do this. Let, let's go around the table. We'll do quick inter, uh, introductions. <coughs> Where are we starting then? Um, I, I can start. Uh, How about Brad? Everyone here knows him. So actually, I just, go ahead, Mark. Mark Greco, Legislative District 24. Cole House, Legislative District 8. I'm a visitor, Richard Klein, District 12. Austin Wheelock, uh, Deputy Director of Operation of Swigel County. Gary Toll, Swigel County IDA. Brad Riddell, District 7, District 12. Beth Asian Saunders, Deputy Clerk of the Legislature. Arisha, District 19. Chelsea District 3. Well, Church County Administrator. Big turn. Give me the chairs and plan. No, Chesma, Legislator uh, District 10. Thank you very much. Okay. Who are you? I just saw. They let me sit in this chair. Um, why don't we why don't, go ahead, John? However, you want to do it. Sure. Well, uh, uh, Gary and I are here today. Uh, Mike Treadwell couldn't make it. Uh, he's actually uh, recovering from some health issues right now. Probably will be back for the next meeting um, that you guys will have in March. But 
I will be here trying to fill big shoes uh, for this meeting. So I'm um, going to try to keep it brief, uh, but we wanted to highlight a few economic development projects, and uh, then we'll talk about the CFA as well. So. Uh, the three projects that I wanted to discuss today, um, two of them are financing, one of them is a pilot related project. Um, first one is Brown Dogwood Products. Uh, that is a business owned by Patty Smith in the town of Claremont. It is a uh, wood product manufacturing company. Uh, they actually work with D&D Logging and Macintosh that are, that are uh, pretty much adjacent prop, uh, businesses. Um, the owners have been, for several years, they've been selling firewood and animal bedding, and they're now going to be expanding their business to include um, manufacturing millwork. They're going to be doing planing of rough lumber. And um, specific to this project, um, they're going to be kiln drying um, woods for, for both making millwork and for um, Macintosh, because they need to have some heat treating done for their, their pallets. And um, right now, they're actually having to send stuff all over the place and then have it come back. And so this is going to help them a lot, too. So. Um, what they're going to be doing with this project, uh, it's a $156,000 total project. Uh, the IDA participated with a $65,000 USDA IRP loan uh, for a portion of that project. And like I said, that's going to be to buy a, purchase a kiln that's going to be used to dry the green lumber for manufacturing siding paneling, millwork, and supplying Macintosh um, with lumber for heat, to make heat treated pellets. Um, the project is going to create three jobs with a new payroll of 56,600, um, and it's going to support uh, manufacturing in a rural area that doesn't really have a lot of other manufacturing. Um, and like I said, the other thing that this project does indirectly is it's actually going to help make Macintosh more sustainable in the town of Palermo, uh, because right now they're having to, um, they'll have lumber there, then they'll ship it down to either Constantia or to Onondaga County, and then they'll be bringing things back. They're, they're going to be able to reduce a lot of their, their travel time and logistics by doing this pro um, getting the services of this project. I also want to say this is also a women-owned business. Um, I mentioned her name before, but just wanted to kind of state that. Um, it's good to see the manufacturing on the Yeah, and this, and this actually, if I could, this, this highlights one of the goals of um, our, our shared study which mentioned that we really need to be investing in the things that are succeeding. We need mm -hmm. to be investing in the supply line in, in the yes. different track. And so it's exciting to see some, a project that uh, from coming from a company that is succeeding and starting to kind of double down on what is working around mm -hmm. here. So, uh, yeah, we, really we've fun. done a lot of uh, looking into um, the, the metal manufacturing supply chain, but I mean, this is really important as well in the, in the wood, wood product manufacturing as well. Uh, the next project to discuss is uh, Universal Properties of New York LLC. This is uh, 5863 Scenic Ave in the Village of Mexico. Uh, this was the um, this was actually the site of a the former bowling alley in the Village of Mexico. Uh, they, that project that building was demolished and uh, fortunately was demolished, and uh, 5,600 square foot of it was saved and, and renovated um, into space that'll be used by um, CITI BOCES, as well as the food pantry. Um, the IDA participated in this project um, with a $150,000 pilot EDF lease for specialized HVAC equipment um, for, for that building. Um, like I said before, it's going to be occupied by uh, CITI BOCES, which will be developing some flexible classroom space and offices, and it will be the uh, main location for the food pantry, which what I've heard is a pretty neat little location over there. It's going to be really helpful um, service for the county. Um, let's see here. So that's it's anticipated to create and retain uh, 10 FTEs. Yes. Yeah. Are those um, both tax exempt? They are tax exempt entities, yes. I believe um, and that was actually one of the reasons that the IDA was uh, wanted to participate in this project because of the um, the, to make that space uh, viable for it to get some assistance on that project, or else it would have been pretty difficult to make any numbers work for that. Jerry, do you have a note there? No, I, I think there is a pilot. I mean, there is a pilot as well, yeah. Yeah, on this project. Um, yep. We uh, based it on what it was being assessed by the town of Mexico, and we started there with a 2% escalator per year. Yep. So it's not taking anything away, and it's just going to go from there. Mm -hmm. Okay. And then uh, the last project I wanted to discuss in terms of these financing projects, this is a, a pilot project. This is Abundant Solar Power 
LLC. This is in the town of Albion. Uh, this was actually just approved back in January. Uh, this is a development of a five megawatt solar renewable project. It's a community solar project, and it's located on a 35 acre former um, gravel pit in the town of Albion, owned by the town of Richland. So it's a little interesting situation. Um, this is a project developed by Abundant Solar, who was uh, actually, they were selected uh, via RFP by the Central New York Regional Planning Development Board to partner with on solar projects. Uh, and the reason that they pick them is because they find some creative solutions to work on sites that have limited development potential, like sites like this that form a gravel bed, things like uh, brownfield sites, and, and so they're looking to do more projects like this. Um, this is going to have an annual generation capacity of 9 million kilowatt hours, which is enough to serve a 750 to, uh, depending on, I guess, how energy efficient you are, anywhere from 750 to 1,250 homes. Uh, it's included 41. It will include 41 construction jobs. Um, it's that this project is going to receive a pilot for 20 years. Uh, these projects are interesting because they could. Um, there's another program through the state that they could take, which would make them tax-free for 15 years. Um, but they uh, they elected to go for a pilot on this project, which will actually it'll provide an annual payment of $21,260 a year, which is quite a bit more than I think the $1,500 it's paying now as a, just a, as a gravel pit. So it's a large increase in, in um, taxes to the different taxing authorities. It's going to create clean energy, um, five megawatts of that, um, and help to um, get some CO2 out of the air. So it's a, it's a good project. Um, the summary of these projects in terms of um, the three projects are going to create, they're going to create three new jobs, they're going to retain 10 jobs, um, and it's an, an investment of almost $9 million for these, these three projects. So, any questions? Any questions? Good information. Okay. And then uh, I'm just going to kind of briefly go through um, the consolidated funding application, which is kind of the New York State Hunger Games of grant programs that happens every year. Um, that they, those awards were announced back in mid-December, and uh, Oswego County, uh, 11 projects were awarded for approximately 4.3, a little over 4.3 million dollars. Um, and I just wanted to kind of give a brief summary of some of those projects. Uh, one of them is actually an idea project, so I guess I'll start there. Um, so down on the former Nestle site, the IDA is in the midst of uh, doing the design and engineering for a 30,000 square foot. Um, manufacturing startup facility, and uh, that project was awarded $850,000. It's a $4.3 million total project cost. Um, the IDA is anticipating that project will, will uh, create or retain 30 jobs in the city of Fulton. It's going to bring manufacturing back to that site, um, which has been gone now since uh, 2003, and um, help us to attract and keep some of our best manufacturing companies here in the Sweden County. Um, so I'm going to go through a list of some of the other projects that were uh, awarded. Um, so CDM is another project that's down at the Nestle site. Um, that is, they're developing a 9,000 square foot building on at the corner of Bay and uh, 7th Street, the north corner of that. Um, that's going to be leased by charter, um, and they're going to consolidate a lot of their operations from Northern Onondaga County and Oswego into that, that um, site. Uh, that was a $282,000 award for, I believe that's a $1.4 million project cost in that range. Um, that, I don't have it right in front of me here, but I believe from, from what I remember it was around there. Uh, so that's another good project there. Um, we'll keep them in the county because they were looking at some other places as well, possibly Northern Ireland County. Um, another project that was approved, uh, Light All Performance Materials. Um, they're the former internet interface solutions um, on uh, 481 in the town of Albany. Uh, they received a $700,000 uh, CFA award um, towards the, what they're looking to do is restart one of their um, uh, product lines. They have a couple decommissioned um, pieces of equipment, massive pieces of equipment down there. And they're looking to uh, restart that line, which uh, would create uh, new jobs down there and, and help to retain what they have. Because right now, I believe they're working on off of one line, really. And um, so this, this would help to make them a little bit more sustainable down there. Um, that, that project would include um, 
refurbishing that machinery as well as getting some new equipment to um, finish that line up. Um, another project, and I'm sure Dave could probably say more about this one, but the Camp Hollis um, renovation that was $229,000 um, to winterize Camp Hollis um, into a four season use. Uh, let's see. There's, and there's several projects that are related to infrastructure, which is another major issue that was identified in the um, Sula County Economic Advancement Plan, and, and a lot of those projects were able to be addressed through this. Um, Village of Cleveland, a million dollars for uh, water system improvements. Uh, Town of Oswego was able to get uh, 300000 through the CFA and then another couple million dollars to the to ready towards their uh, Lakeshore sewer construction project. Uh, that's going to add several miles of uh, of sewer line along the lakefront that's going to actually go over and attach to Freddie and Boulevard and help make that a little bit uh, uh, easier sell to help develop that. That's one of the main things that's missing right now, sewer service. So uh, to, to get the kind of businesses that you want to get there. You can guarantee that we'll get the breweries that you guys who get out fixture uh, operating without waiting high water. You imagine it's been very difficult. Yes. Many of you have been down there experience it, so yeah. it's an exciting project. Really. It's also going to connect into the residences as well. It's, a, it's an economic development project, but it's also going to help for, for residents as well that are, that are along the way. Um, Water quality issue too, as those septics fail and that are right on the lake shore. So. Mm -hmm. Yeah, you have a big problem. Um, uh, let's see, uh, Sandy Creek was, uh, they got a uh, shoreline site grant for $30,000 that's going to help them to do some resiliency feasibility study work. Um, the Port of Oswego got a $20,000 grant for the to as a matching grant for the looking at the feasibility study of developing a performing arts center on the water on the land that's owned by the port on the west side. Uh, it's going to be an interesting project to see how that develops. Uh, that could be if if that is proven to be fruitful, that could be a, um, a large impact to the city of Oswego. It's still pretty preliminary, and they're looking at the feasibility of it now. But um, if it if it's proved successful, that could be a major project. Just put in a little plug too, our county <coughs> development team also uh, acquired a brownfield uh, grant a few years ago that uh, helped uh, right. with some of the study for that project we're talking yeah. about. So, good one. Um, in terms of a few other projects, I just wanted to go over. So the <coughs> of Phoenix, um, they were able to get a New York Main Street grant for $290,000, which is going to help them to do some uh, various projects that are along um, in the village downtown area. I think it's like four or five projects that they've identified as, as part of that. There might be some other money for some other projects in there. Um, but that's uh, projects to do some beautification facade work, um, maybe build out a couple of stores. And um, let's see here. Let's I think I skipped one. Just want to make sure I don't miss any. Um, oh, there was one, and this is not one that's an economic development related, but this is just another CFA one. This was um, a shared public safety software project. That's a CFA one that was uh, for five hundred seventy-six thousand dollars. So, so. The funding that goes to the CFA, a lot of the projects are economic development, but there's other programs under there that different departments of, in municipalities can, can apply for, and they're typically all competitive. And we're pretty excited to see 11 projects, uh, like I said, 4.3 million be funded in Oswego County. Um, outside of that, uh, the month before the ready um, grants were announced, uh, $16 million coming to Oswego County for that. Um, just this past Friday, um, there were some, there were businesses that were there was a deadline for um, small business awards to be ready. Um, I don't know the exact number yet uh, of how many of those because those are actually being looked at right now, but we'll know soon on that. And um, you know, so between the Fulton DRI being announced, we go finishing all their projects, CFA this year, and ready, there's a lot of money and, and activity happening in the Swigo County. So it's been an exciting year. That's great. Um, any mm -hmm. questions on any of the Items that Austin mentioned. I just have a kind of a side uh, comment. You know, Austin mentioned the uh, food bank, uh, that second project, mm -hmm. and you don't hear about these things uh, often. The departments don't talk about them, but uh, in addition to the regular work that our folks do from day to day, uh, from time to time they take on special initiatives. And the Office of Aging, in the month of December, uh, put a food drive together for the 
uh, food bank, and they collected across uh, all of their uh, colleagues in various departments about 60 boxes of food for the food bank. So to help you envision that a little bit better, don't ask me how I know this, but that's the height of that rail, the length of that wall, and two boxes deep. So it was quite a truckload of food that uh, they did. The Office of the Aging didn't blow their horn about it, but it was good work on their part. Um, kind of things that you guys should know about from time to time. Sure. Yeah, I just want to, want to make uh, one comment. Uh, I just want to commend the staff of Operation Oswego County and the IDA for the work they're doing while Mike is recovering. I mean, they pulled together staff meetings and everything. They really uh, worked hard to make sure we don't miss a beat. So Austin, Kevin LaMontagne, Teresa, Karen, and Evelyn are doing a tremendous job. And I want to thank them for what they're doing. Great. Great report. Um, the jobs piece is of great interest. Um, do you know offhand, not in the annual report, the year-end report, but how many jobs were created in 19 and how many retained? I don't have that number off the top of my head. Uh, I can make sure that we can get that for you for the next EDP meeting. Um, some of that is still, um, we, don't, we don't kind of finalize that until about this time, maybe in a couple weeks here, in terms of all the projects that came through in 19. Um, but I, I don't have that off the top of my head, but I can get that. If a business gets an award or a pilot and mm -hmm. they project they're going to, let's just take a number, for example, eight employees, mm -hmm. and they end up just hiring one, mm -hmm. is there any repercussion to that? Or there that are, yeah. There's clawbacks in terms of if you don't meet your numbers. Now, usually there's a little bit of give in there, but if you say you're going to create eight and you only create one, you're really not getting even close. Uh, you know, and typically, um, a lot of those are projections, and say so you're basing it on where you think the market's going to be and what happens. If, if something happens that, uh, and they can make a good case, you know, you could you could give them more time to do that. Usually, it's it's within a certain amount of time. You know, it's not like within one year. It's usually within three or five years or something like that. Um, but if you were to create one job and you said you're going to create eight, there, there's provisions for clawbacks for pilot agreements and for uh, other benefits. So the state does the same thing. So I can say that there was one this 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 following uh, year mm -hmm. in 2019 that did fail yep. to hit it, and they were as they did this this year. I was there. They did remove their pilot from them. So we we do have recaptures depending, but we try to work with the businesses yeah. just to make sure because there's a lot of factors that go into it when they start out a new business, especially the economy, the demands, a lot of things. So initially we try to work with them and then if need be, like Tim says, then we have to uh, do what we need to do. If you say you're going to create 50 jobs and you create 40 jobs, you're getting, you're pretty close and you know there's probably some factors that happen that you know, you're not going to go after them for that, but if you say you're going to create 50 and you create 10, that's a big problem. Yeah. Thank that's a good you. question. Mm -hmm. That's great. Uh, any other questions? Wonderful. Well, just a reminder: the uh, there is a uh, an IDA board meeting once a month. It is televised now, live stream televised. So another thank you to the Average City of County folks. Uh, Gary's got to wear his tuxedo. Oh, yes. so. it, it's a G rated uh, <laughs> meeting. Not just the IDA meetings, but the public hearings as well. So oh, if you yes. can't make it to a public hearing in your in your jurisdiction, then you could still follow it, um, or or tell your constituents to follow it um, online. And if there's any questions, just call the office and they'll make sure you get the link or however it's set up. Mm -hmm. okay. Or you can just go to YouTube and, and yep. type it so. in. Kind of also, I do want to thank you folks as well because I don't know if anyone had a, uh, a public meeting in their district as legislators, but starting this year, um, I've already seen that there has been a, not only are the required folks who are updated on the public meetings, the taxing authorities, uh, but the folks in Upper Street County have also reached out to the legislators directly as well in addition to So I appreciate that. I know folks are interested in that as well, so thank yes. you. Well, as a side note too, when we had the public hearing in Albion on the five megawatt solar farm, um, the legislator for that district, Herb Yurden, school district and others, looked because they couldn't make the public meeting. They did see it live on YouTube or whatever. And so they got information from that, and then they attended the meeting, and uh, they were better informed on what we were doing. That was great.
Right. How the public meetings publicize? And what's the best way for people? To sure, out? it's a ten days notice through the newspapers. Uh, we also list it on our website. Um, we list it, uh, put it on our door as well. Uh, but yeah, it's 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 in the local papers. Um, and like we have to give ten days notice before it's done. Um, and yeah, so we get. Is there any anything else? Yeah, there? we also send a notice to the tax and the yes. itself. Right. Yeah, they have you know, the county, the school district, and the. And yeah, so we're going to know. Yes. Elected officials, are, we're going to know. Yeah. Oh, yeah. We're going to get invitations. But <laughs> Joe Moe on the street that might you know, have an interest. Sure. You know, yeah. Because it is public. Right. The, I mean, the, the best way that they find it would be in the local newspaper. Um, or if they're, if they're checking our website regularly, they can see that as well. All right. Thank you. Cool. Well, thank you. That was great update. Appreciate thank you filling in. Awesome. Yeah. Um, I guess we're all set. Yeah, oh, great. Right. Go question. How's our solar? Joanna, are we seeing any things? Um, I don't know. You have to check with John Booker. That's under his department now that it's fully and operational. It uh, varies based on the weather. Yeah, I guess the form as well as the monitoring. So we're going to be reviewing it. So can I get some numbers on that? Mm -hmm. That was going to be a great one. Mm -hmm. This late plans are nice of them. That's it. Okay. Well, yeah. well, and so you. just Marie, <laughs> uh, on that note, the one, the one variable, well, there's two variables we can't control. Weather, sunlight, and the uh, statewide price of electricity. So when you look at a, a pro forma and you say, well, Historically, electricity has increased a half a percent a year for the last 30 years. And you put that into performa, and then electricity starts decreasing a half a percent. There's no local control over that market. You know, but so. it still should have right. taken our need off the grid and maybe back paid us. You know, I mean, it still should be a more positive flow regardless of it. Half a percent. Yes, I understand our numbers be lower, but I suspect the numbers are in the ditch. I, I'd love to see. That'll be good information to have. I agree. So yeah. we'll look forward to that. Okay. Thank you. Um, I guess if not, motion to adjourn. Motion. Motion. Okay. Second. We do get. There's like a payback. Oh, thank you. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Thank you, everyone.